Woo woo. I don't know if you're this excited about it, but I am because the block will be finished. So we have now made nine blocks in total. We have cut our... Uh, two seconds. We have cut our sashing strips. I just need to double check I have cut the right number of sashing strips too. Well, yes, I have. We have cut our sashing strips. So we've got the pink strips and we've got the uh, background strips. So there are 12 of each of those. We've cut those, okay? We have got four squares of pink. Oop. Pink. We've got four squares of pinks, which are our cornerstones. We have got four squares of teal, which are our cornerstones. And we've got eight squares of purple. The lovely Ad Davies is watching. Hello, Ad. Ad is watching live. As you can tell, my uh, Zoom movement thing is definitely very high tech. Apologies. Sorry. It's what we've got. Phone me. That's it. Sorry. There we go. So what we have here, we have nine made blocks. Uh, if I hadn't smushed these all down in a bowl, they would have been nice and tidy. I've also cut the inner border and the outer border. These are now cut and ready. When I've lost them and can get confused, they're on the laptop over there. So when I say, where are they? You can tell me they're over there, like our own little panto. Right, so we have got our pattern and our pattern is ready to go. We are doing figure four and we are going to take this really slowly, okay? Don't rush. The cornerstones we're going to put in one area over there because it is very easy to lose these pieces. And we're going to put our sashing strips over here. Now for figure 4.1, I'm going to need a pink sashing strip and I'm going to need a background sashing strip. One of each. Okay, I need one of each of these. What I'm also going to need is a block number two. Now, the direction of this is really, really important, okay? So when you've got this block here, you've got a background color over here. The background is not going there, it's going over here. And we've got the pink over here. Now it's important that you follow the directions in your book, in your pattern for this. And this is how we're sewing it together. So this strip is going on here and this background strip is going on over here. I thought black was a great idea until I actually just saw it on camera there and against my black jumper or navy jumper, doesn't quite work. So bear with me. Right, so usual story, quarter inch seam down the side and we are away. Okay. Now, if your block is perfectly made, your sashing strip will, me will meet exactly there. If it's a little big or a little small, what I suggest is do a few little stitches at the start, leave your needle down, and then grab it on the end and just hold it taut so that you can then ease the gap out along the block. You Nine times out of ten, you don't need to do this. But if your sashing strip is a different size to your block, it happens, it happens, don't get worried. You can very, very easily ease that in across the block. And do it across the block because you won't notice it as much as if you do it in the bottom left-hand corner. And if you do it in the bottom left-hand corner, you may end up with a tiny little uh, pleat. And you know what? That's okay too. Right, so pink on the, I can't remember what this is, here, pink there, and then background there, okay? Now remember this is also back to front for me and you as well. So over here, my strip is exactly the right length, I'm very happy, I don't quite know how that happened, but there we go. Right, grabbing my sewing foot. So at the point where we've sewn these on, you're going to give your fabric a little press. Um, I'm going to do this very quickly. Just press that across. 
as you can tell, I haven't rotated you because you've all seen me pressing multiple times. And all I'm doing is pressing towards the sashing strips. You can press towards the middle, you can press to open, you can press towards the sashing strip, whatever you feel comfortable with. Right, so I have now made, I'm just double checking, I have made figure 4.1 for you there. Boom! Okay, next we're going to take a grace, a background sashing strip and we are going to put that onto the left hand side of a block one. Okay. Right hand side of block one, sorry, right hand side. Now, in theory, you're going to make two of these. I should have actually followed my pattern from the start and read that bit, but we'll do it again in a few moments. Okay, so we've got our sashing strip over there. And again, I'm just gonna press that on, press that over. And again, I'm pressing towards my sashing strip. You can press any way you feel comfortable with. Okay. So I've made one of those. So all I'm going to do next is I'm going to sew these two together. So I'm going to take this background sashing strip and I'm going to sew it onto our block one. Okay, once I've done this, I am going to make the second version of the... No, I'm not. I'm going to finish a row and then I will do it again. As usual, a quarter inch seam all the way along is what you're looking to do. Okay, so I now have what I've called figure 4.3. There we go. That's figure 4.3. Boom, boom. So now my next one is to make figure 4.4. So I've got this, and you've got to look and see which way round it is, okay? So you've got to have the dark, the background color here, and then we're putting a pink strip over here. That is per the diagram, so just follow the diagram as you go through. Now, row, row one and row three are identical in this quilt. All you're doing is you're just repositioning your block twos to make sure that they're pointing in the correct direction. So you are making two of these. And all you're doing then, once you've made them, is you are slipping them or uh, switching them around. As long as everything lines up perfectly, you are ready to go. Okay, so that is now our figure 4.4, and I'm now going to sew this to my figure 4.3, and I'm going to finish my row number one. Okay, so really simply, I'm now going to take my background, sewing, uh, background sashing strip, and I'm just going to attach 4.4 onto it along there. And that will be my row one, as well as my row three. We're going to make two of these as we go. And we've now finished row 
one. Okay, so you can see all of your triangles are pointing towards the middle of the quilt. It's important just to check these as you go along. Um, I'm just going to now press on the uh, last two seams that I haven't pressed yet. I'm just going to press those down. They all like to watch people iron. <clears throat> and then over here, you'll see I'm just pressing towards the sashing strip. I'm not moving the fabric. I'm just giving it a little bit of tension to try and get rid of any extra fabric there that's there. And we are finished with row number one. So now I'm going to repeat that same process and I'm going to make row number three. I'm just going to set this to one side over here and I'm now going to make row number three. So exactly like we have already, we're just now going to make row number three. Exactly the same. So I need one of those, one of those, and one of those. Okay. So with this, I need to make sure I check to my picture. Everything's pointing in. So I go back to my diagram and I need to have, oh, my machine's just become unthreaded. I found the scissors that Joe hid from me. Thank you, Joe. Right. So I'm putting a pink sashing strip on that side and I'm putting a background sashing strip on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do that now before I go any further. I'll start with my pink one. could feel a piece of fabric there. Right. Okay, so we've sewn the left hand side on. Now we're putting the right hand side on and the right hand side is a background colour. I'm going to do this ever so slightly out of order now so that I know I've got to put one of these block ones in. So I'm going to put the number block one. I'm going to put the block one onto the strip already because I know that's where it needs to go. And then on the other side of my block number one, I know I have a background sashing strip. And that is in the pattern, ready for you to see. Okay, so we're now at the point that we've now created. We've got block two, 
And we've got block one and we're putting these together. And now I know that I have to put another block uh, number two in here as well. And I know that these two greens need to be pointing in towards the quilt there. So I'm now gonna add that on to my uh, sashing strip of my block two. This is exactly what we did in the first part of the video. It's just now doing it a slightly different way, but you end up with exactly the same effect getting it done. And then as we recall, on the edge of this one, we have to do a pink sashing strip. So I'm just gonna pop that last pink sashing strip in and then double check that I've got this the right way around because this is normally where it goes haywire and now my thread has come undone again. It's always when the machine's been going for a little while, it gets a bit tired. Come on, my darling. There. Now at this point, you've got to do your ironing and your pressing. So we'll now go over to the ironing board and do our pressing on this. And fingers crossed, well, I can actually do this now and we can double check I've got this the right way around. I know that the fabric is backwards, but we can double check. Yep, that all looks the same. Pull this along, that looks the same and that looks the same. So I'm very happy that my rows one and row two are the same. So all I'll do now is, um, I'll start on that end now that I'm here, give that a little bit of a gentle tug and then pull that off. Okay. So with this one over here, as I said previously, I am pushing all of my sashing I'm pressing towards my sashing strips. You can do them however you choose. You might want to nest your fabrics. Whatever works for you is correct. Okay. And then our last seam over here. So now we've made row one and row three. We've just got to do the central block, which is row number two. Okay, I'm going to just leave that hanging there for the moment and I'll not. I'm going to pull that over there and over here and I'm going to leave those just over there. Right, so we are now at the point of the pattern where we are doing the middle row. We're doing the middle row over here, and the middle row is two of row number block number one, and then our central block in the middle. Now with the row number ones, I know that one end is going to have a pink, so I know the end outer row is going to have pink, so I'm just going to put that onto one side of both of row uh, block ones. You know I like a bit of chain piecing. Okay. Okay, so there's my first block number one. And then I know one of them also, both of them have got this pink on the edge. So I'm doing the outer block in the pink as well. Uh, 
Now the other thing is our central block has got a background sashing strip on either side of it. So to make, oh, oh, almost missed my seam there. One of my seams rolled over, sorry about that. So what I'm doing next is I'm gonna take my block number one, and I know that one side's got pink on it there, and then I know one side's got a background sashing strip. So I'm gonna put the background sashing strip on there. And like this, there's exactly the same with the other block one that I've got over here. I'm going to put a, gr a background sashing strip on here as well. Okay, that's got pink on that end. And we're going to put a background sashing strip on this end. Okay, so on the first uh, block one that we have, you've got to have the pink on the outside, then we've got our background sashing strip here, and then we're going to put on our block three. We're going to sew our block three onto this over here. And we're going to sew that on now. Now with these square, uh, the central block that we're attaching, when you sew this on, I'm going to show you here. When you sew this on, you'll notice that you've got a whole load of points over here that ideally you want to be able to meet so that when you fold this open, you haven't lost the point on the edge of your triangle over there. Now, these are pretty good. Um, I think I did miss one or two, but I'm okay with that because I'm okay with that. You must then go through and see what you're happy with and find the best way of doing this for you, okay? But don't be cruel to yourself, just be kind, okay? Right, we're on the last seam of row number two. I always find this bit the most exciting because this is where the vision of the quilt for me takes shape and it's where you're actually able to see what's been in your head for a little while, um, then actually just come to life in front of you. So I find this bit very, very exciting. And as you press this, you'll be able to see it gets even more exciting because then you can tell if you hit your points. And if you didn't, you're not going to be upset with yourself. Okay, so now you are pressing your outer sashing strips. I, as you can see, I'm pressing these towards the sashing strip. You don't have to do that. You can do it how you choose. And I'm just giving this a nice little press as we go along. I have got steam. Unfortunately, I am not using my usual iron. This iron has a wonderful habit of steaming everything. I personally don't like steam in an iron I do for quilting. Uh, I just don't have another iron in the studio with me today. So we are just accepting our limitations on this and going to go with the process and enjoy it. 
And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, oh well. Got to keep your, keep your spirit up. Okay, and we're on our last little seam over here. I might just redo that beginning bit because I think we may have it. Yes, we do. We had a little bit of a pleating issue there. So let's see what it looks like. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so you can see number one is fine. Oh, those points look good. Oh, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to give this a bit of a press because that central square looks a little unhappy. Oh, those look good as well. So when I say those look good, I mean over here, you can't quite tell if you've cut any of those points off, which is what you're looking for. So there we go. We've got rows one, two, and three already done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make our sashing strips that go at the top. I just look like a... Let me try this again. Apologies. Right, so now what we're going to do is the strips that go in the middle. So we're going to have two sets that are made like this, which is where I'm going to have three pink. One, two, three pink. And I'm going to have a blue, two purple, and another blue. So I'm going to have two blues and two purples in each of this set. And I think it's one of those ones, once I make it, you'll understand what I mean. Um, and we'll come back to the solids in a little while. What we're doing here with the background fabric is I have a piece of background fabric and on one end I'm putting blue. So I make sure I put my blue on one end over here. Okay. And then on the other end of this piece, I know I'm going to have a purple. So I'm putting a purple on there. And I'm doing that twice, okay? So I take another piece of this, and I'm going to put a purple on one end. And I'm going to put a teal on the other end. Okay, I know this may seem a bit bizarre as to what I'm doing, but it will. Trust the process. So what you've got is you've got two like that, okay? Now the teal is on the outer end, so we've got teal, pink uh, sashing strip, we've got a purple cornerstone, then we've got a pink sashing strip, so I'm putting these together now. Trust the process, I promise I'm not leading you astray. And then on the other side of this sashing strip that we've just added on, I'm putting the purple on. Now I know that you're going to look at that and go, what on earth is he on about? But I'll show you again, I'm doing a blue on the end. I'm doing a purple on this end. I'm taking another pink sashing strip and I'm putting a purple square on one end. And then I'm putting a teal square on the other end. Okay, bear with. We're almost there, we're almost there. Okay. Okay, so we've got purple on one, uh, teal on one end, purple on the other, and then putting the leftover sashing strip onto the purple one. And the other one that looked like this as well, with the purple, the teal on one end and the purple, on the empty end of that new sashing strip I've put on, I'm sewing that on. I'm hoping that made sense because what you're making is teal, pink, purple, pink, purple, pink, teal. You're making two of these. And these are going to go on the top and the bottom of your rows one, 
and three, okay? So you've got these now ready to go. We're gonna press these before we stitch them on because you need to make sure that you've got that as accurate as you can. So you're gonna make those two, but now remember you've also got to do the ones with the background sashing strip. So you're gonna take three and three again, three, oh, check, one, two, three, one, two, three. You have got two pink, two pink to each one, and two purple to each one. Now in this one, the purples are on the outer side. So I'm gonna take my background strip there, and I'm gonna put my purple on one end. And I'm gonna put my pink on the other. So just like we did before, I'm gonna make two of these. And then when I've got the two of these, I'm gonna then join the one that is the missing, or the leftover one, I'm gonna join that to my pink sashing square uh, corner stone. So my pink cornerstone will go to the middle one. And I just realized I did this the wrong way around. And the only reason I'm doing this is to chain piece them. So outer color is the purple. I've got my background and then I've got my pink. And then this leftover one over here, I'm attaching to the pink. And then I'm taking off the one I've made as well, which is purple background and pink, and I'm attaching this pink bit right to the begin the other end of the leftover background sashing strip. And that then makes number 4.8, which goes purple, background, pink, background, pink, background, purple. I know, makes no sense whatsoever. I haven't checked the live feed for a little while, so I will just check now if there's anything there. Just Anne Davies' says, hello. Hello, Anne. I'm not sure if Anne is still with us, and if you are, hello. Right, so I'm now doing exactly the same thing again, bearing in mind that my purple are on the outside section, and my pink are going towards the middle. And I'm putting the spare piece to the pink because we know the pink is in the middle. And I'm cutting off the piece that we had at the beginning. And I'm attaching the leftover pink strip to the end of the remaining uh, sashing strip. So we've now got four, got four, um, what are we calling these sashing strips there? So I check again, I've got purple, background, pink, background, pink, background, purple. So that is what we're looking for there. We've got our three rows over here. I'm just gonna put them onto my table so that we can sew those in a moment. But what we do need to do now is press these uh, bits together. Now, because everything I've done on the remaining blocks has had everything going towards the sashing strips, I'm now gonna press this towards the cornerstones. No, I'm not. I'm pressing them towards the sashing strip. My mistake, sorry. So I'm pressing these towards the dark side, towards the sashing strips, because in theory then, they should line up beautifully when we come to put these together with each of the rows. Okay, we're almost there. So that is the first one. Just take those, put them on the top there. And now we're on to the second one. Again, I'm pressing towards the sashing strips, towards the dark side in my case over here. Just for the case of nesting on the, when I put the rows together, I thought this would be easier for me. You can do it how you want to do it. Okay, so that is the second, I think it's a 4.8, done and dusted. And now we're doing 4.7. I think it's 4.7. If I got the numbering wrong, please forgive me. I don't have the pattern with me right now. Uh, and that's going towards there. There. 
So these particular strips are at the very bot bottom and the very top of the quilt that we're making, the central section of the quilt. So I know that those are going to the top of row number one and the bottom of row number three because they are the outer sections of the middle bit of the quilt. And we're on our last little pressing bit there. So now we refer back to the pattern on how best to do this. I'm going to move you up a little bit so you can get a little bit of my face. So all I'm doing now is I'm just putting these back on my ironing board so that I know what is what and where is where and who is who. And I am looking for my rows one and my rows three. I'm putting my row two to one side. I'm grabbing my... I'm going to start with row one, okay? So what's important to remember here is which way your arrows are pointing. So you can see in the picture they are pointing towards the middle. So when I put this strip on, I need to make sure that I've got my background colour green and background colour green is the side that I'm attaching this to. And by that I mean I've got background colour green, background colour green, and on this end, background colour green. So that's just a, a way that I know that I'm putting that on the right way. Okay, so I'm now going to sew this onto this. I'm going to sew on uh, figure 4.7 onto figure 4.5, being at row one. And I'm going to do this to make life easier. Right. Oh, I did this wrong way around. Normally, what I would have done, if I'd thought about it, I would have had the sashing strip that I'm attaching be at the bottom onto the feed dogs rather than all of my seams because I run the risk of potentially uh, losing a couple of seam directions at the moment. But I'm okay with that. We are going to just crack on with it and see how we go. Okay, now because I folded my, uh, pressed everything towards the sashing strips when I put the rows together, and then when I put these end bits at the top, I pressed everything towards the cornerstones, you should be able to nest everything beautifully here. And in my, situ my case, it is actually nesting very, very well. That is good news. I did silly, I did actually, I am a bit worried about my seam directions over here. So if you're in that situation, you can then just stop and start and do it the other way around, whatever works best for you. Okay, we're now on the home stretch of these. Um, there are a few points that I want to try and get if I can. I'm just rolling these over to check if I can get them. And if I can't, I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm just doing the best that I can. Okay. Make sure that that lines up beautifully, which it does. Roll that back and see where we are. Okay, so I've now put the top border on to this section here, and you can see the points there are not too bad. I've missed a couple, but on the whole, that one's perfect. That's ideally what you're looking for, where it just has a beautiful little kiss there, that one there, this one you can see it's not quite as good, and I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. So that is my row number 4.9, but I need to also attach one of these to the bottom. So I'm going to do that now, but this time I'm going to make sure that I put the sashing strips at the base so that that way I can try and catch as many points as possible as I go through this process. Okay. Right.
For the sake of ease, what I'm doing is I'm lining up my cornerstone with the sashing strip on the uh, gap between blocks number one and two. I just do that now so that if there is any fabric to be eased in, I do that across the block. Um, as you can tell, it's actually pretty accurate. There's not a huge amount that needs easing in at all. So yay, not all blocks will work this way. And if you've managed to nail it that way, well done. If you haven't, then just give it a good tug from across the entire portion of the block and any extra fabric will ease in beautifully. Okay, I'm now on to the exact point where the sashing strips and the cornerstones are meeting. So I'm giving that a nice little alignment over there. And then lining up the next one as I go along and that lines up beautifully. And there's not a huge amount to have to manipulate over here. In fact, that actually matches perfectly. So all you do now is your quarter inch seam all the way along. Oh my goodness, there's no manipulation to be done here at all. That lines up beautifully. That is not always the case in my quilts and I'm okay admitting that. But that lined up perfectly. Okay, so now we're already onto the last block in this row. Lining up my end points there beautifully and just move this along to check where we are. And voila, we have now made number 4.9, where we have the top and the bottom section onto this row. Woo! I am going to leave it now before I press it. I'm going to carry on sewing onto the rows um, because it doesn't really affect anything by not pressing it. But what I am going to do now is attach row number two over here um, and Having put my rows together, I know that I've got a tiny little discrepancy. Nope, it's not on this one, it's on another block. So all I'm doing now is putting these two together. This is row two, and I'm attaching it onto the section that I've just made. But I'm going to try, if possible, to get my sashing strip to go against the feed dogs again. And I'm going to line this up like I did before just making sure that any seams that I can catch along this way makes life easier having the sashing strips at the bottom and then I can guide anything that I need to guide or want to guide along the way over here. Okay, I feel like everything's about to fall off the table and that's why, because I've got a little bit of extra fabric there which I wasn't expecting. Um, right, so we're now putting rows one and two together at the point where your cornerstones are on the section over here, the cornerstones here. My fabric is pointing that way on the cornerstones and on the block above it, it's for pointing towards the sashing strip. So you do have that wonderful way of being able to nest these in beautifully together. Just use your fingers and check that everything nests in beautifully. In this case, it really does. Now one of my, I'm just going back and forth there, the seam at the beginning of that block had come apart. So just by going back and forth, I give an extra little bit of rigidity to the tiny little bit of seam. It was only one stitch that had come off, but I'm just making sure that that lines up beautifully and that you've got that extra security if you need it of having a little back and forth at that point, just in case that seam does start to fail later on. 
So like before, I'm nesting up at the end of my block over here where the cornerstone is on the piece underneath with the sashing strip piece above. Just nesting that up beautifully, checking if I've got any extra fabric. And I've got a tiny little bit of extra fabric over here. So what I do is I guide this in as we go along. And I put a little bit of tension on here. I'm pulling this ever so slightly so that what will happen is the top bit will then feed in extra, any extra little bit of fabric that needs to be fed in. And the bottom bit, you can see now I've already done it. It's all lined up perfectly. It was a tiny little extra piece of fabric there that we just needed to line up. And it's all done. So this seam is meant to be open. And this one, I have definitely missed the point, And I'm okay with that. That one, I may miss the point as well. And I'm okay with that as well. My cornerstones have matched up there, I think. And I think over here, we may have a tiny little bit of fabric to try and ease in. Eased in beautifully. And there we go. So again, I line up my end bit here to check that all lines up. I give that a gentle pull and you can see there's no fabric distortion there at all. It's just an easy, simple, quick and painless seam down there, quarter inch, and it lines up beautifully. Not every case will be like this. You just then gently ease it in along the length of your block rather than doing it in the last inch, because at that point, you will end up with a pleat, and we don't want pleats. Right, we are slowly taking shape over here. We've got our top layer border over there. We've got rows one. We've got our sashing strip there, and we've got row two. And now we're going to put on the next sashing strip over here, which is this one over here. And exactly like we've done before, I'm lining that up on the edge over here and I'm putting the sashing strip towards the feed dogs as well. Checking that I've got enough fabric along the way there and I do. So off we go. It comes together really quickly, this quilt, once we've made it. Okay, we've done the first section over here. That again, block one lines up beautifully. There's no extra fabric to try and ease in or get rid of. Okay, lining that up now. That's perfect. Perfect. And... That one's perfect too. It doesn't normally go together this well. I get nervous when everything's going well. Right, so now we're into block three. And these are where those little points at the very top, it would be lovely if you can match those beautifully. See how you go. As I've done a couple of the points already, I'm just checking that the fabric lines up and it does. There's nothing to ease in. So I just keep going straight down this row trying to match these points. And if I do, great. And if I don't, I'm okay with that. Right, there we go, that's lined up, that's lined up. And by that I mean the cornerstone of the piece that I'm adding in is lined up beautifully with the sashing strip next to it from the block above. So that all lines up beautifully. And again, exactly the same over here. Those line up brilliantly, so there's no need to be easing any fabric in along the way. I am happy with this. It's going quite well. Now, if at this stage yours is not going quite well, please be kind to yourself. Don't get beat. Just stop. Leave everything for a few minutes, walk away, go and have a cup of tea, drink of water, go for a little walk. Just take time because there is no need to get upset or worried about anything. Just stop for a bit because sometimes when you walk away from it, it comes back and everything is back to normal. Just checking if there are any more comments. And Davies is still with us, goody. So 
we are going great guns here. We've put that one on there. We've put that row, we've put that sashing strip, we've put that row, and we put that sashing strip, which means the only thing left to put on is our block here. But now, again, we need to be very, very mindful that our um, sashings, our border is there. Our row is going on in the right direction. So what I know is that this green one over here has to be pointing to the middle of my block. So by laying this out, you can see that that is now pointing to the middle over here and my arm's in the way, which is really helpful. This is pointing to the middle, so I know that this is right. And the other way of checking is it goes background green, background blue. That's on the outer section. So I know that we're on to the right track here. I've got everything pointing in the right direction. I'm just triple checking it. Yes, I have. And again, I'm now going to sew these down with the sashing strip at the bottom. And there we go. Now, at this point, we are going to have a very, very long pressing session because we want to make sure that this, before we put any borders on, that the central section is completely and utterly pressed perfectly because it often happens that when you don't press the central section and you start putting borders on, that things start going awry and that is not what we want. You need to make sure that everything is lined up beautifully. So by doing this, I'm okay sewing these strips on without having them pressed because it gives me that little bit of extra maneuverability if I need to just reposition the fabric. Um, so I'm happy with that, but when you come to put the borders on, you do need to take your time and you do need to make sure that they are pressed and the piece is as flat as you can get it before we start putting borders on. Now, you are welcome to press as you go. You are welcome to. This is how I make the quilt. It doesn't mean it's the right way to make the quilt. It's just what works best for me. Now, all the way we've been doing that, I've been holding the cornerstone to the sashing uh, background corner, uh, back there, the sashing, the background sashing uh, strip, just to make sure that that all lined up perfectly. So if you are just making sure along the way that everything lines up beautifully, you just want to make, be mindful and get everything all completely in. Not sure I hit that point there because I was distracted and talking and not doing paying attention. So if you do miss a point here and there, sometimes it's, it is just simply because you're not paying attention. Okay, so we're now in the last stretch of putting on the third row and making sure that I keep my cornerstones and my backing sash my background sashing strip lined up to hopefully meet that point as we go along. And we are only left with this one left to put on the outer section. So we've just finished 4.12. And we're now doing 4.13, which completes the central section of the quilt and the sashing section. So that is very exciting and very good. And all I'm doing now is sewing on the last uh, section that we sh sewed earlier to be able to then finish the central section of the quilt. All of this is in the pattern, so you would just refer to the pattern at 4.12 and 4.13.
uh, to be able to show you exactly where we are at this point. And I, for one, am really excited about this quilt. I've not made this quilt for a long time. So being able to make it in Alison Glass fabrics, but not her Sunprints collection, and some old ones and some new ones, it's very exciting for me. I love it. And it just also showcases Alison Glass's fabrics because they are so unique and so wonderful and just so vibrant. And the great thing as well is season to season, because she has a color palette that she really enjoys, you're able to add certain collections on from certain years into more current stuff because this is a combination of older fabric with newer fabric and just picking that perfect background color, which I think the black has worked brilliantly. I've used black dimples from Macawa to do this. I'm just checking I'm not gonna be putting my seam in the wrong way around by doing this. And we're almost there. And the central section will now be done. Right, so we're gonna give this a good press now. Um, I'm gonna go to the other side of my iron, only because, oh no, I can do it from here, that's fine. And I'm gonna press it from the back first I think by just, oh no, that's not going to work. Sorry. There we go. I'm going to press this from the back first because I think by doing that you're actually then able to set the, the sashing strips up better by setting the seams from the back. You must do how you think is appropriate. If you want to press from the front, you do that. I'm just trying to, if possible, get my seams to go in the direction I want them to go and to make sure I get it as flat as I can all the way around. Okay. Now remember, if your husband or partner is looking at you and saying you can iron, why are you always only ironing quilt tops? Just remind them you're not ironing, you are pressing. And pressing and ironing are two totally, totally different things. So don't get sucked into that, oh, you're ironing now, will you iron that? No, I'm not. I'm pressing and I don't know how to iron. That has worked very well in my mariage for a very long time. I don't know how much longer I'll get away with it, but there we go. You keep trying while you can. Okay, so exactly like before, I'm just getting a little bit of pressure on here to pull it out. Just take your time, press everything the way you want it to be pressed, and then you will be able to see how it has turned out. And hopefully you will be excited. I know I am. Looking forward to showing everybody exactly where we are and how far we've come.
Okay, so I'm just going through and where I've got a seam that's twisted over, I'm just trying to reposition that seam to get it the right way round, just to make the back as neat as I can. And now all I'm doing is I'm rotating this 90 degrees and I'm going to attach, I'm going to just press these down as we go along. It's a little bit more than one block that needs pressing. Just folding that over and then doing the rest of this quilt. But it is very important that you make sure that you press everything before you put borders on because by the time you put borders on, you need everything to be as flat as possible. And especially with your seams, you want them to be going the right way <coughs> because when you put your borders on, you want everything to be lined up as perfectly as it can be. You just want everything lined up beautifully. We're almost there. Okay, oh wow. Not too bad. I'm not gonna show everybody yet. We're gonna hold that off for the next section. So what we've got next to put on is our background border. We're doing a background border and we are sewing on the sashing strips. So we've got the background border here and we've got a green corner to go in each end. Now, I have been very silly and I have not actually measured this out the way it's supposed to be measured. So you will not do this. You will have measured everything beautifully. Oh goodness, did I just cut something I shouldn't have cut? I think I did. One, two, three. Oh, poo. Right, uh, I'm going to have an extra seam in mine, so rats. Okay, so what you would find is if you have... When you're doing your cutting, I'm not giving measurements away because I've already had somebody message me to tell me that they're stealing this pattern and they can't figure out the measurements, um, which I think is a bit unfair. We don't charge a huge amount for the patterns. So what you're doing is you're cutting a width of fabric piece uh, a width of fabric piece and then what you do then is you're taking half a width of fabric on the other side and then you would trim that down to be able to make your border work. Now I don't recommend that you do it the way that I'm going to do it. I have just made this quilt many times and other quilts many times so I'm okay doing this. I don't recommend it. I recommend that you take this to your cutting board once you've sewn these strips together and you cut them the length that they're supposed to be. And the reason being is if you're an inexperienced quilter and you've got a longer piece of fabric than the center section of your fabric, what will happen in nine times out of 10, what will happen is you will sew on and sew on and sew on and sew on and you will end up putting the border on to the fabric, but what will happen is you will feed in the entire extra long border onto the center of your quilt. And in recent days, recent weeks, I have had three or four quilts come in where the outer border, when you measure the outer border, it's four to six inches longer than the central section of the block. Uh, central section of the quilt and it's very easy to do that because what happens is people put the border fabric on the bottom they let the feed dogs suck all the fabric in which is great that's what you do when you try and lose the uh, the um 
the excess on it, but what happens is it sucks in too much. So when you come to quilt it, you've got these really wobbly, wobbly edges. Um, and as, an, as a long arm quilter, that's really problematic for me because I can stitch it on no problem, but there will always be a pleat somewhere because it, four inches is, you know, it may sound like not a huge amount, but four inches over a 60 inch quilt, I've got to lose three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter per run that I'm stitching. So it becomes quite problematic. So if you're doing a really dense quilting, that's fine, it's easy to do. But if you're doing quite a loose one, you may end up with a situation where it isn't quite what you want to happen. So on this section, there is no right or wrong to which side is top and bottom. So I'm just gonna pick a side and I'm gonna sew this down. Now remember, this piece that I'm sewing on is much longer than I need it to be. And that's okay because I am confident I've done this many times, so I will trim this down as I go along. You, of course, are gonna be a very good person and you're gonna go and take it to your cutting board and you're gonna measure it to the exact measurement that I have put in the pack. I know you will, because you're good like that. I'm not. There are two borders on this quilt. This is the outer, the inner border, which is the background fabric, and you've got green cornerstones in the corner. Okay, so what I'm doing, because I'm confident doing this, when I get to the end, I line everything up and I just cut this end bit off. But I don't cut it when I get to the end, I cut it when I'm about halfway through the quilt, okay? It's important that you just do it when you're comfortable. And personally, I do recommend multiple times, cut it before you actually start sewing it on. Do as I say, not as I do. So the inner and outer border are identical in how you put these together. So I may not show you the outer border only because it's identical to the inner border. So the technique that I'm using is the same. Um, and I've now lost a piece. How on earth did I do that? Oh, there it is. Oh. So you're putting the two side seams on, the two side sections on first. So as I said, this is exactly the same as the inner and outer border. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the inner border, not show you the outer border, and then when we come back for the th fifth episode, which will be how to quilt it, I will then show you the finished quilt then, because we're already at over an hour, and I'm sure everybody is a bit bored by now. So we'll put these down. So you're putting the side ones on first. And I do suggest that you iron these before you put the outer border on. I think it's really important that you iron them. And before you put the top and the bottom border on, it is important to iron them and make sure that everything is nice and flat. So like before, I'm just folding this over. As I said, I've done this multiple times. Don't do this. Cut your fabric before you get to the thing. And we will then have our two sides on.
So there we go. We have got our two sides on perfectly there. And I'm going to press these before I put the top and the bottom on. It's really important to make sure that you press these first. I'm going to do a trick and I'll show you what my trick is. If you haven't got time to press the whole thing, just make sure that you press this section really well where you're going to be sewing. Okay. And this section over here, this is just a quick little hack. So you haven't pressed the inside, but the top bit where you're attaching your border, that's pressed down beautifully. So you will easily be able to put that border on without any problems at all. Just make sure you get that last section there. It's just a little hack that if you want to do it that way, you can. But because you're not doing usually a live feed stream to be able to do this, making things a little shorter, that's a little trick that I've learnt over the years that if I just don't have time to iron the whole thing, that's where I'm at there. Now the next section that we're doing for the attaching the top and the bottom, you will see that what we've got here is our piece of fabric. And because I haven't cut the fabric to shape, I'm now, I've attached one corner on. So the one of the cornerstones on, and I'm gonna start by sewing this onto here. Okay and I make sure that I've got my fabric pressed and nestled beautifully so that my corners match perfectly, and that one does. Start myself off, and that's nested beautifully. And we are away. One inner border is away. Okay, oh. Right, we are away. Now again, because I haven't cut this fabric the correct size, don't, pull, don't stretch. Just let your fabric go through the machine really easily. Let your feed dogs do the work for you. Just take your time with it. There is no rush. make sure that your seams are going in the direction they're meant to be going. Just checking where I am here. Just getting this last seam on. Now before I get to the end, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my fabric down. Now because I have not trimmed this to the correct size, don't do this. I'm just gonna trim that off now so that I know where I am. So at this point, I'm going to break it off and I'm going to attach my next cornerstone on to the end over here. Okay, and then I go back and I start. I ended my, my thread there. I'm going to start about an inch or two back to make sure that my seam here doesn't fail later on. And by doing this, oh my goodness, that's the first time I've managed to get that. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Wow, look at me. Never knew that could happen. But don't do it. Cut your fabric yourself. Okay, making sure that my seams are going in the direction that they need to go. Double check where you are. Nestle that together, which I've done there beautifully. I'm quite surprised. So as I said a little while ago, I'm not going to put on the outer border. 
Um, I'll do that off camera only because we're already at 75 minutes um, for this video and it's quite a long one. So I just want to make sure that um, you know how to do this. You're going to put the cornerstones onto both sides of these, nestle everything up and then we go from there. I think that's just the easiest way of letting you all know what you're doing. I hope that's okay with everybody. If anybody does need me to do the border, uh, send me a message and I'll send you a link, but it is identical to what we're doing right now. I will, however, before we end off, show you what we're looking like with the inner border. Um, I think we've waited this long. You need to see what we've made. Okay, we're almost at the last block which will be time for me to reposition fabric. Our outer border is in purple. So we will be able to put a purple border on next with some teal cornerstones. Right, so that is there. those right sides together and stitch that on. And we're on the last stretch now of the inner border. And I want to nest these as I go along, which is working perfectly. Oh my goodness, this is great. Um, hi, John. Um, I've had my sewing machine for over an hour. Oh my goodness, I've, had, but I've not made a quilt. Do you cut the selvages at the top of the mat or to in the side? Um, I personally, Paula, I always, when I cut my fabric, I always cut the selvages off first. Um, so it doesn't matter whether it's on the selvage or whichever way, which uh, on the whichever way on the cutting mat, I always cut it off first because I find that it's easy to forget that it's on. Um, and even on the back of this quilt, I miscut the selvage and the selvage comes through. So I always cut the selvage off as much as possible. Just makes your life that little bit easier. Hello, Ali. How are you doing? Love my poncho. Thank you so much, Paula. Hi, John. It's Faith. It's best to steam or press. Um, I've been using a dry iron. Use a dry iron. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, sashing colour is gorgeous. Thank you so much, Ali. Returning, having had dinner. Oh, Ali, that's wonderful. So sorry I haven't been checking that. I've just wanted to get this to a point that I can show you everything. So now we're going to go for a little bouncy walk just to show you where we are. Sorry, girls and boys. I know this is really like, bleh, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. Now you get really close to me as I open the door. It's always eerie when the lights are off out here. I suppose it's more eerie if the lights are on. Uh, thank you, Paula. The quilt is gorgeous. Paula, you're very kind. Thank you, darling. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to do this and I'm going to see how much of the quilt I can show you. Oh my goodness! Sorry, I had to see it first just to check I hadn't got something the wrong way round. And voila! I think you can agree that's quite good. In fact, I'm going to lay this on the floor because I am actually quite shocked at just how good that looks. 
Bear with Cola. Oh, wow, I'm really pleased with that. So you can see now we've just got the purple border to go on the outside with the teal corners. Um, and you can see the teal corners there tie into the purple. And then my binding, I've done something really special for the binding, and I can show you those in a minute. But I think you can agree, oh my goodness. And if I go close to the fabric again, you can see how the Allison glass, the yellow from there goes into there, goes into there, and the pink goes into there and goes into there. And it's just such perfect, perfect colours. And you can see how, just by putting the pink cornerstones over there, sorry, there, there, it creates that extra pattern all the way through the quilt. And the green going from there to there to there to there, it just creates that extra bit of movement through the quilt. And just, and then having that little pop of green as you go along. Looks great against the black background. Thank you so much, Faith. So there we go. It is the 23rd of December, 2022. It's about nine o'clock at night. I am gonna say au revoir, happy Christmas, have a good one. And I will see if I quilt this tonight, otherwise I will quilt it another day. You look after yourselves, have a good one. I'm gonna put the extra border on and look out for my Facebook page, I Quilt Studio, on uh, my Facebook page, which is John Cold Morgan, which is facebook.com forward slash I Quilt Studio. And you'll be able to then see my finished product. Have a fabulous Christmas. Ali, happy Christmas to you as well. Big hugs. Catch up soon. Bye, everyone.